In this video, we will explain the reason of the gap between connectors of assembled trusses. For a good understanding, we start to define the name of all components. At first, the female receiver. This part is welded onto the main cord of the truss. Both the inside surface and the hole for the truss pin have a specific conical surface. Second, the conical connector, often referred to as the male part. Again, we see a conical shaped outer surface and a conical hole. They match the female receiver and the truss pin. And third, the truss pin. This is a steel alloy pin with a specific tapered outside to match the holes of the conical connectors. For proper functioning of the coupling system, it is important that the angle of the conical surfaces is exactly the same. The gap is designed on purpose. Why? Let's have a look at the connector when it's under tension. In that case, the truss pin holding the male and female part together is transferring the load via the area shown. At the same time, the cross section of the truss pin is subject to shear. In this case, there is no pressure at the conical surface of the male and female part. If the main cord is under compression, the pin is loaded at the opposite area of the conical holes. Again, the steel pin is subject to shear. However, in this situation, the conical surface of the male copper is also under compression. You might think that the coupler therefore becomes stronger. Certainly, if we add the front surface of the female receivers, if they were touching each other, this would be correct when there is just compression in the truss. This, however, cannot be the case for multiple reasons. At first, the smallest fluctuation in tolerances of the conical surfaces will lead to greater or smaller gaps. So exactly matching the fronts of the female receiver is almost an impossible challenge. Fluctuations, however, can also occur due to use, for example by dirt or wear. So we need a gap to cover these fluctuations. The second reason is that compression and tension alternates in the truss structure, depending on its orientation versus the load and the amount of supports. Where and how these forces run can be very complex and is a job for an engineer. Truss calculations are based on its weakest link. This means there is no difference in allowable loading when the coupler is under tension or compression. 